Welcome to Toronto Bible Study. I'm your host Mike Santa and we're here today to talk about another Vince Miller video. I like these videos because they're so short that I could easily like debunk him without making a long video and then and then it's just but it, but you know that's what makes them so shallow right he's trying to fit this interpretation of us of a proverb or whatever into like three minutes or, or less than three minutes or something it's like dude come on man don't do that don't because you're you're forcing yourself to produce some shallow interpretation man like it's so weak it's so weak. Every single time he comes up with this weak interpretation. But anyway, of course he does because he's Calvinist. So once you're a Calvinist, you, you can never understand the Bible. You're just a heretic. You, you don't understand anything. So get out of Calvinism, Vince, first. All right. First of all, I advise you to do that. But right now I'm going to explain why you're wrong about this particular proverb. And then uh, we, move, we can go on from there, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to just play the video, as you guys know. Everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thanks so much for joining me for this devotional. Today we're in Proverbs chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 26. It says, A worker's appetite works for him, his mouth urges him on. <laughs> Now, this is an interesting proverb because it clarifies a couple of things about a common worker. First, it clarifies who a worker works for. And the proverb suggests that the worker works well for himself, not his boss, not his supervisor, not his manager or employer, just himself. And second, it clarifies what motivates the worker. And it suggests that the worker works because, well, he's hungry, right? <laughs> he's not necessarily hungry for the work, but he is hungry for the food. <laughs> so today as you work, remember this wisdom. There is always a motivator and a motivation for every common worker. But then there's a man of God. And this man is uncommon because he has a different motivator and a different motivation. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Are you a common or uncommon worker? And if you're uncommon, is your motivator and your motivation evident in how you do your work today? I hope so. So get out there and do some work, fellas. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this devotional, do me a favor. Hit like, hit share. Okay, so why, why is this wrong? All right. What he's saying is that the common worker is is the common late like i mean you know in king in the king james as the the actual bible it says this okay just so you can understand the proper words of this thing okay he that laboreth laboreth for himself for his mouth crave it craveth it of him okay his mouth is craving so he has to work to feed his mouth okay now that's not the common worker it's just everyone okay everybody who everybody has to go through oh wait a second Okay, I'm going to go back to Vince. Or, I don't know, what's going on here, man? Okay. So the common worker, he works for himself. Because, it's because he... It's not the common, it's the laborer, right? The laborer is the person who works with his hands. He's kind of, they, they're talking about, they are talking about poor people, you know? They're talking about people who, they have to work in order to eat. If they don't work, they can't eat, all right? He's not talking about, about Vince Miller, who, does, who has to, like, read, read Bible passages and 
read books and then come back and talk to people and stuff, okay? We're not talking about those people or the, or the intellectuals or people who work in an office and push pencils all day. No, We're talking about those people who work. They have to work or they can't eat. They have to work with their hands. They work hard, okay? Now, those people, they could be they could be Christians or they could be non-Christians. It doesn't matter what, what they are. Okay, whether they, whether they are motivated by God or whether they're motivated by the devil, these people have to work or they can't eat. Okay? So it doesn't even matter if they, if they, if they, whether they're motivated, even if they're motivated completely by God, as this, as this person said, the uncommon, right? They still have to work and to eat. That's what it's talking about. Okay? Those people, those people. And how, and now how, what lesson can we draw from this? Well, it's just talking about this fact of life. That those people have to work. They have to work to eat. So they're not working there. They're not, they're not there working because they want to, you know? And even if they're motivated by God, if they had another opportunity, then they'd probably be going out and preaching the gospel or something. Or, or studying the Bible or whatever. But they have to work to eat. Okay. And this is not something the Christians are not free of this. As I was, I was actually I was showing that other passage before, but I'll show it to you now. Because this is something that it's part of our life too, as as Christians too. Okay. See, even Paul, when he's writing to the Thessalonians, he says, "For even when we were with you, this we commanded you." That if any would not work, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Okay? So even they had to work and eat. And Paul used to work. Paul used to work with his hands, you know? Because he didn't want to take the money from some of the churches. Because then they'll say, oh, oh you know, we, we, they'll take the, the glory in it. That, oh, we, oh, we were the ones who gave Paul food and all this stuff. So he, he just used to work. He was a tent maker. He used to work with his hands, you know? So this to me, Vince is very out of touch. Okay, he's very out of touch with the with the reality of life. The reality of that sometimes people are poor and they have to work just to eat food, man. Okay, and so this 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 Bible passage is talking about those people and as a pastor, you have to understand those people. And it's not, it's not nice to just say, oh, be motivated by God. Don't be motivated by your stomach, guys. Why, why you know? No, I mean, maybe they are motivated by God, but they still have to go and work. And, because, again, they have to eat just to live, just to do anything to serve God. Okay, so it's just, it's just like an out-of-touch way of understanding this and acting like, oh, oh, those people are the common people and we're uncommon and we're better. No, no, no. You're not better than them, Vince, okay? Because as you can see right here, Christians have to do, have to work. With, if they don't work, they can't eat either. You're not better than them. And uh, what he should do is understand what it's talking about and, and talk to those people. Like, you know, give them something else from that. Like maybe it's say, talk about how, yeah, you have to do, you have to do these things to eat. And even Paul did those things to eat. And he and he even he told the Thessalonians and whatever churches that they have to work or if they don't work they they don't eat either same thing. Okay, and that's just part of life, and so it's just part of our Christian life to deal with these realities of life, and just to and just but to also keep our mind on God as well. And he's right about that. But it's not as if, but the way he's saying it, like, oh, the, they're, the un, they're the common and we're the uncommon. No, 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 no. Christians are also part of that world. This, 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 the verse, uh, Proverbs sixteen twenty six is absolutely talking to Christians as well. And the Christian who labors, he labors for himself, for his stomach, you know? And even all these pastors, you know, like Mark, my old pastor, he's, he uh, he has a job. He doesn't he doesn't just he's not just a full time pastor. And this guy Vince, he's a I guess he's a full time pastor, you know. But he's he's just doing this stuff. He's making money left hand over fist. So that's why he talks like that, you know. He doesn't understand. 
He doesn't understand the real people that what they're going through, and then also he's just like out of touch because of the whole Calvinist theology. They won't, they'll never understand the Bible or anything. They're just blind. I like how he jumped over all these good sayings. He jumped over all these sayings. He's coming down Proverbs. It's interesting to see what he what he jumps over. He get, he he gave all these from sixteen ten to sixteen like fifteen I think. Yeah, he gave all those in one. <laughs> all those in one one three minute video uh, trying to like oh the six points of leadership listen that's so it's like every single interpretation he gives is so shallow so weak so like no wisdom no 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 knowledge no deep understanding of anything okay but if you want a deep understanding then go deeper okay don't listen to this three minute oh your three minute wisdom Three minute devotion. Why is it three minutes? It, you need some more time to get into what these things mean. Okay, it doesn't take three minutes to understand the, uh, even one verse of the Bible. People write a whole book about a verse of the Bible. They take one verse out of the Bible and write a whole book about it. There's some verses in the Bible. There's probably like a small library you could find all the books about them. Just one verse. You know. And then he's going to tell you about oh, how, to, how to interpret it in three minutes. Yeah, right. But look how he switched. Look how he jumped over all these. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold. And to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. You think you think he understands that? Because he, he's used to like his money. He likes to sell you, you know, the... The crappy merch he has on his like all his hats and his little t-shirts and stuff, but he doesn't talk about this. How much better it is to get wisdom than gold. So I'd rather have wisdom than your than your merch sales, okay, Vince. Vin, Mister, uh, oh, like and subscribe, oh, oh, hit, smash that like button, whatever, bro. Listen. highway of the upright is to depart from evil he that keepeth his way preserveth his soul that's a good one too he skipped that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall that's a very good one too did he skip that one i don't know if he i think he might have, he got one some of, one of these in here better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to, divide, than to divide the spoil with the proud. See, Vince, that's for you, bro. That's for you. See, you don't get... You don't understand, That's why you don't understand this one. You don't understand 1626. He that labored, labored for himself. Because you don't understand poor people. And look here. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. So when you're up here with the proud, with the John Pipers writing your little articles on, on, on Desiring God website, and you got your, your little guitar with all the signatures of all your, like, mega preachers on there, or whatever you got on there. That's you not understanding the poor. Okay, that's you not with the humble spirit, with the lowly, all right? You try to divide the spoil with the proud, but that's not good. He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good. And whoso trusteth in the, trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Yes. See? That's good. Trusteth in the Lord, Vince. Not, don't trust in your Calvinist election. That's not, that's not trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're trusting in the election that happened before the foundation of the world. That's not trusting in the Lord Jesus the wise in heart shall be called prudence, and the sweetness of the lips increases learning. See, I'll work on that one, definitely. Because I don't have the sweetness of the lips. Vince, you got that. You're pretty good at sweetness of the lips, my boy. Well done. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it. But the instruction of fools is folly. See, Vince, this is for you, bro. If you had understanding, it would be a wellspring of life to you. But instead, the instruction of fools is folly. That's your instruction. When you give these three-minute little stupid proverb breakdowns, what, what are you talking about, man? It's ridiculous. That's the instruction of fools. That's you, bro.
So Vince, I would highly advise you to stop, stop being the way you are. But first I would tell you to stop believing in Calvinism, okay? And start believing in the real gospel of Jesus Christ, which is not Calvinism, okay? Because I remember in your other video you were talking about free will and determinism, and then you said something like, we have free will, but we always choose the wrong thing. Like, think about what, think about how ludicrous that is. I made a whole video about it. You can see it's not very long. But it's like you're saying, you're saying that people who are not saved never choose to do the right thing. Never, never, ever. Really? Does that make any sense? And that's what you said. Now, that's what you said. Now, now that I said this to you, now you're going to like change it. But I'm just saying to you, that's what you said. So you're either not very careful about what you're saying and what you're teaching your, your congregation and your followers. Or you don't get it. Or you or you just you're willing to change what you say just as the wind blows, every doctrine. Okay? So I don't know. Whatever your problem is, Vince, you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta clean up, man. But anyway, the the important thing to do is stop believing in Calvinism and start believing in the real gospel of Jesus. Okay? Vince my man? But I mean, I, I'm not gonna hold my breath for you to, to smarten up about that stuff. But I, I, I am gonna pray. I am gonna pray for you. Okay. And God bless you. Not, not, not God bless your ministry because your ministry is a wicked heresy. But I will, I will say, I will ask God to bless you, and hopefully to show you a wiser and a better way. Okay, and uh, everyone else, thank you for watching Toronto Bible Study. God bless you, and uh, hallelujah. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay, God bless you, hallelujah.